the charge is a secondary effect of spin um, of the Planck field. So I, I initially started these calculations in the uh, paper called uh, the Schwarzschild proton. And then I completed some of these calculations in the holographic mass paper. And uh, in these two papers, I made a calculation back on the envelope, it's not complete, a calculation of the, you know, a point particle, um, a point charge on a, on a rotating metric. Uh, as if, uh, so if you have a, a, a rotating Planck field, what is the charge you could expect of a Planck field of that radius spinning at C and so on? And, uh, and I got very close, uh, appropriate function to the anomalous uh, magnetic effect. But, and so th this leads, of course, more has to be done, but basically think of it as spin, as angular momentum, like a little bit like a magnetic motor. Uh, you know, think of it as the, the charge being the result of the Planck and the electrostatic charge being the result of the Planck field oscillating, but not, don't think of oscillation as something like this, you know, up and down thing, but actually as a rotation, a bulk rotation. In this case, it's billions and billions of Planck's that are bulk rotating together and are defining an electrostatic boundary at the shear modulus in the field. And that boundary, that electrostatic boundary that it produced, that charge that it produced, is what we call that particle, like the proton. Like the proton is not a billiard ball. Again, you know, the proton is a, when we call, actually when we, in physics, when we describe the radius of the proton, we have to say the charge radius of the proton, because all we know is that in that region of space, there's a large electrostatic charge uh, that defines that space, that produces a boundary. We're not seeing some kind of ball, a billiard ball down there. We, we're just seeing a boundary, uh, a charge boundary in space. 